Hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com. Oh, it's trying, okay. It was trying to uh, go out on me. Hey, Mary, I'm glad you're here with me. I am, hey, Marlene, I am in the sun, as you can see. But that's gonna be really good when I turn the camera down. Hey, Velma, welcome, welcome. Tuesday at two, we've got some fun watercoloring today. So I, um, hey Cheryl, I'm glad you're here and Grace is here. We've got a good group already gathering. I'm gonna give it just another couple of seconds here. Let me get my computer going so that I can see comments and things. Okay, let's see. Hey, hey. we are up and running. Everything is working. Let me turn off my notifications so I don't get a phone call right in the middle of this or somebody trying to text me, which is what's happening now. So I hope everybody's doing good. Um, hey, Pat, I'm glad you're here. I hope everybody is having a good week already. Hey, Jackie, welcome. We continue on in the midst of pandemic and um, I am in Texas and in San Antonio, and it seems like all of our major cities are having a huge uptick in cases. But you know, I know several people who have had or do have uh, coronavirus. I'm very happy to tell you that every one of them has recovered and not required hospitalization. So, hey Sue, I'm glad you're here. I think if you just watch the news, it gets really depressing. And if you talk to real people, not quite so much. So yes, it is a serious, uh, it is a serious um, illness. Um, so are many others. And hey, Shannon, I'm glad you're here. And Ada K is here, welcome. And you know, my husband and I, we are in our 60s and um, we are, I can just tell you we're not living in fear. <laughs> So we are, um, hey Sherry, I'm glad you're here. We are, um, our church has been open since Mother's Day and sometimes it's only a very few people that feel to get out and gather with us. There's plenty of space for social distancing and people can wear masks if they choose. I will tell you that right now, because the governor has mandated that public buildings do require masks, so we are requiring them at present. But as of a couple of weeks ago, we were not. People could choose to, and some do and some don't. So, you know, I think that's one of the big things with the whole pandemic thing going on right now is that we extend grace to people. And that is if people wanna wear a mask, that is, we're not gonna judge them. And if they don't wear a mask, we're not gonna judge them. So um, great opportunities to extend grace to our fellow human beings. And um, so I am going to quit talking about pandemic because I know you did not come here to talk about pandemic. <laughs> you come here to escape all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring camera down and see where we go from here. Okay, here we go, let's see. Hopefully you can see my gorgeous, gorgeous, um, Grid paper. This is a new item in the online store and I think it's absolutely fabulous. Some of you had commented on the one that I've had before that was the, um, had the uh, 30th anniversary Stampin' Up um, logo on it. This is just gorgeous, isn't it? A beautiful way to brighten your space. It is double-sided, so when you get one side mucky, you can just turn it over and use the other. And all of your end colors are right here, along with this lovely, lovely, um, this is the Jar of Flowers stamp set, and just kind of blown up here. So this is just a fun way to brighten your space. Hi, Kathy, I'm glad you're here. And it is just a beautiful way to brighten up your crafting space. And I can't remember, I think it's about nine or $10. There are not as many pieces in here as when you get the white, and you can still get the white grid paper, but isn't this just fun? And we have been talking about the in colors here on my Facebook Live, so I thought this would be a fun way to uh, go over some things with you today and then jump into a new project. This is where we are over the last week or two is we've been looking at Magenta Madness. The week previously, hey Terry Lynn, I'm glad you're here. 
we were looking at Just Jade. So I wanted to just kind of go over these Just Jade projects with you. Um, these are ready to go in the mail to somebody. I think I'm finally caught up on mailing things out to people. So this was where we were going. And then, uh, and this is just the same, I love to do this with cards. This is the same supplies, just flipped and um, using different papers from the same um, collection. And then we did a simple and stepped up and we were also using just Jade. This is actually one of our hostess sets and I think it makes just a lovely, really lovely um, sympathy card. The other image um, in this is, uh, besides these branches, are this, um, this heart with the little branches. So really pretty. Oh, I'm backwards. Lord have mercy. I forgot it again. Okay, folks. You got me again here. Ay, ay, ay. I was so excited that I was going to be on time today, and then I ended up forgetting to flip the camera. You know, there's only so many things I can get um, get right in one, any one day. Okay, let's see if that's going to give us a little better view of what we're doing here. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so these were using the in color dots, which I think are back in stock. Don't quote me on that. Uh, hey, Paulina and Jennifer, I'm glad you've joined us. I just had to flip the camera back up so I could get us back to being not backwards. Okay, so this is where we had been, and these are going to go in for a mailing um, for comments. And then this was the card that I made to go in with my In Color Club this month because the in color we were giving, uh, or everybody was receiving, was the Just Jade. And I like to play with the in colors with pairing them up with other colors because primarily that is the way that we work with the in colors. We pair them with other colors. Hi, Joanne, I'm glad you have joined us from Delaware. So this was the card that I sent out in my, um, in my in color packets, uh, my in color club for June. And then I was gonna show you, this is another version. Um, this one I put on a, let me call this purple posy background. This is actually, um, this is soft sea foam and just jade with the same other items. So this is a lighter version of this and just kind of shows you how you can take just jade and pair it with a lighter green. And then again, I used a lighter purple. So I used uh, rich razzleberry and then the purple posy. So that is kind of a review of where we had been last couple of weeks with just jade. And then, um, this week, well, let's see, no, last week. <laughs> last week on Tuesday at two, I did this fun bag. Hopefully you can see that, let me adjust a little bit. Um, we made this bag on camera and this was using two 12 by 12 pieces of, um, of designer series paper. And this is granny apple green and it goes so nicely with the purple, ah, not purple, magenta madness. It just goes really nicely with it. I'm trying to raise you up just a wee bit. Okay, let's see, now I've got to move back. Okay, let me adjust a little bit so you can hopefully have a little better view. Okay, so this was where we went and um, this was the card that we did on Thursday. We do simple and stepped up, and this is where we went. So we started with simple, and then we stepped up and thought that this would actually work really well with this bag, or not. Um, you could use them on their own, or you can use them together. Here um, is where I had also put it with, paired the, not put it, paired, the Magenta Madness with the um, Granny Apple Green. Gail, I'm glad you're here. You are a bit late, but you know, I'm always late, so I'm really glad you're here. And Jeanette is here, and I think I'm not quite, hmm, I'm having a little camera um, 
there's a lag, so I can't tell if I'm in view or not. I'll give it just a second to make sure I'm not leading you um, astray, as it were, kind of demonstrating stuff and you can't even see it, so that's not really good. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, and I don't want my, my, um, my laptop is at the edge of my desk and I certainly don't want it to go off the desk. That could be catastrophe for my laptop. But you know, the show goes on, so. Okay, so that's where we've been with pairing our Magenta Madness with Granny Apple Green. And um, I'm just gonna show you another little, I'm gonna just tuck these in here. It's a good place to put these. Um, just kind of by way of review, a few other just super simple cards using uh, Magenta Madness. Here with, uh, goes very nicely with Pool Party. And here it's been paired with um, Purple Posy, really nice. Um, here it's been paired with um, Rich Razzleberry. And here it is with that gorgeous um, designer paper that I'm just in love with, the flowers for every season. Here it stands alone. I mean, look at that. That is a lot of magenta madness, but it, it is pretty. I think the white really helps to break it up. And if I'm out of camera, you guys have to shout and tell me. Um, here it has been paired with Bumblebee and Just Jade which is really a nice combination. And then last but not least, here is a little fancy fold card. And here it's been paired with um, Moonlight, Misty Moonlight. Okay, so let me just show you where we're gonna go today. And I think we're gonna have a good time. Um, we are going to pair Magenta Madness, and let me just show you here the different pinks that we have with Stampin' Up! by way of kind of comparison. So this really strong one here is Magenta Madness. This here, believe it or not, is Melon Mamba. So you can see how much more red this is. I mean, this is a really true pink in my view. It's a very clear, very crisp pink. Petal Pink is a very orangey pink. It's very warm. Um, Flirty Flamingo has a fair bit of orange in it. And then Rococo Rose is what I call a dusty pink. It has a little bit of a grayish hue to it. And then um, Blushing Bride is also a pale pink that has some warm tones to it. So this, you know, um, Magenta Madness really stands out because it's very clear, um, very clear, very, very bright. Um, pink and um, Jennifer is here today and I love how she describes magenta madness. She calls it obnoxious pink and I think that that is a fun way to describe this color but I'm going to show you something today. Not going to be obnoxious at all. We are going to pair magenta madness with mango melody and calypso coral. Now this is a color scheme that I got directly from Stampin' Up and let me show you. Where is my little color, my little color swatch? Hmm, where did I put it? Let me see if I can lay my hand to it. Ah, there we go. So, oh, ay, yeah, yeah, way behind my desk. <laughs> it's a good thing that the camera's down on my ink pads. Um, if you could see the craziness going on behind the scenes here. Okay, um, this is the way I've done my, um, my end colors. And this is a little printout that you can get from Stampin' Up! And I will be happy to share it here with you. And so I just printed it on cardstock. I actually printed mine on Whisper White cardstock and then just cut them. And they give you three separate color schemes for each of the end colors. Now we have these actually for every color in, that Stampin' Up! has. And I use these a lot. And this is where I derived my color scheme for today. So directly from here. And I will show you where we're gonna go and how we're gonna get there. So this is where we're going to go. I'm using the 
sunflower, um, the sunflower bundle. And I actually featured this card on my blog yesterday. I'm part of, well, I'm not part of, I submitted my card um, to a contest and it's Kylie Bertucci does it once a month. I've done it before. And um, it's where demonstrators globally can uh, enter their cards into a contest and you can, you go and vote, it's a free thing. So I'll give you the link. I would love to get your vote. And so you have five votes and there's like, I don't know, there's 40 some odd entries this month. And um, so you choose the cards that you think are the nicest of them all. I'm hoping you'll choose this one. This is the one that I shared on my blog yesterday. Now I took these exact, and this is Mango Melody. Believe it or not, it is Calypso Coral and Mango Melody with the uh, Magenta Madness here. Now I did add this little piece of designer series paper and I just wanna show you this is from the Artistry Blooms Designer Series paper. Thank you, Gail, for voting for me. I appreciate that. And this is the other side. And so I decided to make this exact same card and flip it over and change the orientation to get a totally different look. Now I'm gonna move this here just for a minute so you can see maybe without any kind of distraction, as it were. Uh, nothing to kind of mess with your eye on the colors. So um, really different look. Everything is the same. I did forget to add my uh, rhinestones here, not rhinestones, my sequins here. But um, you can see that just by changing that color, this incorporates all of the colors I used in this card where this injects a little bit of blue. Wow, that's really coming through bad on my, I think the sun just went behind the cloud and kind of changed my lighting here. It looks really bad on the computer. I don't know if it's, you know, I have my little trusty up light here. I don't know if this helps or not. Let's see, does this help or not? We'll see whether that, um, is that, is that good or not good? Um, Cause it's really messing with the colors. These, these are really vibrant, gorgeous colors. And when I'm looking on the camera or in my um, computer, it's not looking that way at all. So um, these are the cards that I started with and I'm gonna demonstrate how you watercolor this sunflower today. Now I think that's just giving us, I don't think that light's helping us. Okay, well, we will just, we will just go with this and hope for the best. Okay. So a little bit of instruction here. So this is the bundle and you have, oh, well, that's my chamois. Um, the bundle is these gorgeous sunflowers and then the dyes, the coordinating dyes. Um, I love the fact that you have this die that will cut out the sunflower. So you can stamp the sunflower itself and then cut out the sunflower. And you just have to line it up. This is not exactly, this, this is not, size is not exact here. Um, and then you also have this overlay piece if you wanna add it, you don't have to. So I did it in the gold foil and um, yeah, it does look better on the grid paper. I think you're right, Jeanette. So I think that um, I appreciate you guys helping me to, to discern what looks better from where you guys are. Um, so this gives you the ability to add that overlay, which is really a cool look, and I did it with the gold. Uh, there's also these fun branches, and you can see that's what these are here. And then this very open leaf, which um, you can use, you can stamp the leaf, cut it out, and then do the overlay. Or what I did was I used just the overlay. And it gives you kind of just a, uh, a little bit of leaf without giving you a whole bunch of it. Um, this is um, a center for your sunflower. I wanted my um, 
Mango Melody to shine through there, so I opted not to cover that. And then this is another set of leaves. So some really great dyes. Oh, and this dye here. You know what, I'm gonna get that flower to show you guys. Hang on one second. I have it over here on my workstation. I was kind of playing around with that flower. So I was taking the Calypso Coral and Mango Melody and Magenta Madness, and I was creating these smaller flowers here and then cutting them out. And I was adding a little bit of that Granny Apple Green. I really like that color combination. Um, I like that particular green with, um, with the, I keep wanting to call it Pixie Pink, with the Magenta Madness. Um, let me move these a little bit so that they all fit when I put it away. Okay. It's, it's a little bit like a Jenga game, you know, getting them all arranged here so that they fit nicely in my little container. Um, so these are really fun to play with as well. I was kind of looking at another piece of paper from that Artistry Blooms, and look how nice they look on there. So um, this designer series paper does have Magenta Madness as one of the colors in the paper. So let's see what we can do with a little bit of watercoloring. So when you watercolor, you always, always use Stays on Ink. Stays on Ink is different from our other black ink and it is for um, water coloring. Anytime you're gonna add water, you gotta use Stays on or your ink is gonna bleed. Our other inks are water-based inks. So I am going to use just these two stamps. This giant, um, this giant sunflower. Now, where did my watercolor paper go? Okay, so here is another little bit of instruction. This is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. It is what I'm going to be using. You can also watercolor on our, um, you can watercolor on our Thick Whisper White. Um, although I don't think it's the best thing. And then you can also watercolor on our Shimmery White. Watercolor paper is going to give you a true watercolor look, and you could really flood this with water and it won't buckle the paper. Now, if you've been around Stampin' Up! at all, this is the watercolor paper that we used to have, and this Fluid 100 paper was introduced last year. Now, sometimes we change something because, you know, maybe there's a problem with the supplier or something. This paper actually is an improvement in my view because our former watercolor paper, which is a, an artist quality watercolor paper, but it's really thick and it's really bumpy. And so um, this new Fluid 100 paper is much, is much smoother. So it still has those bumps. I think it's the nature of watercolor paper because this is actually cotton. This is not typical wood paper. This is actually made of cotton. It's 100% cotton. Um, just like um, maybe some of your undergarments might be, or maybe a summer shirt, 100% cotton. And also, um, it is a little bit thinner, so I find it is easier to layer on things. So um, I still have some of this watercolor paper. I'm gonna use it up, and then when it's all gone, I will be going to the Fluid 100 paper, uh, because that is what we now carry. So just a little kind of by way of explanation. And when you go to watercolor, you are going to use your stays on pad. And my recommendation with this is that I just found that, um, oh, I think I might've picked up the wrong one. Maybe not. Um, I will tell you that I had not used my stays on pad probably in about a year and it was pretty dry. In fact, let me go grab my other one and see if I'm not sure if it's 
just soaked up all the ink from yesterday or if this is the stays on refill and I can tell you that Jennifer and I were um, communicating about another ink pad. She was um, using her um, Memento ink pad and it was really, really dry. And uh, these inks are a little hard to come by right now um, just because of the manufacturers um, dealing with a lot of other things right now. But this is way too dark. That should be a, a nice wet ink on there and it's not. So when you go to ink this up again, you just get a really good pool on there and then it's going to soak into that linen. This is a linen pad. When you open up your stays on ink pad, it has this little piece here and this you need to keep in there. This helps this from evaporating. So the nature of stays on, um, I think it might have some alcohol in it because it evaporates a little bit more readily than our regular ink pads. And so this helps to have a, a good enough seal there where it's not going to evaporate as quickly. And what I do is, this is actually loose when you get it, and I like to put a little mini glue dot in there, and that just keeps it from disappearing. Okay, so now I have re-inked my pad. Ah, yes, now we can see this so much better. So you want a really good application of ink, and that is really, really very wet with ink. And then I am going to give this a really firm stamp. And something I'm not doing right now that I actually recommend is that you stamp this once on your scrap paper before you put it on your grid, on your watercolor paper. Having said that, I had just inked this up and I think it's really given me a nice strong image. The other thing that you find with stays on is it's super crisp. Now you can use this on coasters. So you can use this on like plastic. You can use it on um, porous. Um, the coasters we typically make are made with travertine tiles. So you can use stays on on a lot of different surfaces. Now, before you add water to this, this must, must dry. So. While that's drying, I'm going to show you a couple of other things about stays on. So this is stays on. This is memento. These are the two black inks that we use. Normally, we just use stays on. Uh, sorry, memento for just about everything. And you always use memento when you are using blends. Stays on is for water coloring. So my recommendation is that you have both. I don't use stays on nearly as frequently. And like I said, it does take a little bit of time to dry. So while that's drying, I'm gonna show you something. If I take my stays on, um, my, my stamp that's had all this stays on on it, and I do this, I can do that, but it's still very, very stained. Now, I can still use that, and it's not going to transfer the ink. However, if I want to get that really clean where it removes the stain, then I'm going to use this. And this is stays on cleaner. There's a reason that we have it. And it is so that you can get all of this ink off here. Now, because I'm on a wood table, I'm actually gonna put this underneath me because I could just tell you by experience that this will strip the wood from your table. This is a strong uh, cleaner. It's a solvent cleaner. And so you want to make sure that you don't have, that you have some kind of waterproof surface underneath you if you're using this on a wooden table. And what I like to do with this is to let it sit there for a minute or two and then go over it with some paper towels. And to me, anytime you're going to watercolor, you're gonna have some paper towels handy. So, um, now Terry Lynn, you like to, yeah, you use stays on quite a bit. I know you do a lot of different kinds of crafting. So, um, that's interesting. The other thing about stays on, I will say, now look at that, that's what came off there, um, is that stays on gives you a really, really crisp image. Um, it's just the nature of it. So 
I like to clear the, um, the tip so that I'm not, you know, just adding that back into my stamp again. I will also tell you that the nice thing about this stays on cleaner is that if you have heavily stained red rubber stamps, this will get the stain out, even if you haven't used stays on ink. So sometimes you get a buildup of ink on your stamps and this will definitely take it off. The one caveat is you do not want to use this on your photopolymer stamps um, because this has a really strong um, solvent remover, whatever it is, you do not want to use this on your um, photopolymer stamps. And I'm just going to do this one more time. Um, not, you know, you don't have to be super um, um, detailed about this, but I'm waiting for my black ink to dry over there. I want to make sure it's really dry. Now, this is where you can, after you've done this, you can just go back to this, but it's not gonna get everything out of all of those little crevices. And this is why you will find in the catalog, even though we use the chamois for just about everything now, it has become our go-to cleaner for every, you know, just everyday stamping. We do still have, the Stampin' Scrub. This is, if you've been around any length of time with Stampin' Up, this is what we used to always clean our stamps with. And now, this is quicker, cheaper, easier, it's our go-to. However, there are times when you are still gonna wanna use your Stampin' Scrub. Hey, Diana, I'm glad you're here. And Susan, welcome. Um, this has almost like um, a really deep velvet and that is gonna come in really handy when I wanna get all of the ink, excess ink or even excess cleaner out of all these grooves. We also do have this Stampin' Mist and this has conditioner in it as well as a cleaner. And so it really conditions your red rubber stamps. You know, for many years at Stampin' Up, we only had red rubber stamps. And red rubber just requires a little bit of TLC to really um, to care for it and get optimal results. Now look at that. I mean, it is just pristine. And then I'm gonna come over here and dry it. But you see how, because this is very deeply textured, it gets into all of those little grooves. So if you're finding that you have some red rubber stamps that are not inking up the way they should, they might need a deep clean. And this is what I recommend for a deep clean. So. A little instruction about some of your watercoloring tools while this was drying. Now I'm actually going to just put this here because I'm going to get this pretty wet. And um, I have aqua painters. We actually in our catalog now another one of our new and improved tools is we now have um, a different set of aqua painters. I think they're called aqua no, they're called water brushes, I think. It used to be that you got a large and a medium aqua painter in a package. Now, they actually come three to a package and you get some finer tips, which I think is an improvement. So I need to go ahead and, and make that purchase and see what the difference is. But I was just kind of looking at the catalog and they are, um, they are finer. Now, I like to have um, some paper towel handy, and I can see that I need to get better into the camera. I think I need to come down, not up. Okay, make sure you can see me. Um, Terry Lynn, you are right. It is like Velcro without the, yeah, without the crow. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good way to describe this, um, your stamp and scrub. It's just, um, it is kind of like a Velcro. It's like, it reminds me of a deep velvet. So it has a really fine, um, like little, almost like a little brush system. Okay, so I now have my aqua painter ready to go. I do recommend whatever kind of aqua painter you have that you make sure that you use distilled water or RO water, something where here in South Texas, we have really, um, we have a lot of line scale in the water and um, I can just tell you by experience that you will get little bits of lime 
in here, a little line scale, and it will clog the water going down to your brush, which is not what you want. So what I'm gonna do is wet this initially and just get some water going on here. And this is going to get my paper ready to receive the ink and also make sure it doesn't just like soak up the ink so much that I can't blend it. So you do wanna start with just a little wash of water, okay? And sometimes I like to just kind of put it on my finger to make sure that there's water coming out. You do wanna make sure that you have water coming out. Now, I'm going to take each one of my three colors I'm using. I'm using Calypso Coral. Just move this over for a second. And Mango Melody. And Magenta Madness. And I am going to make a little paint palette. And what I recommend is the easiest thing is to take your clear block and just do like this. And that is going to give me my paint palette to use. Now I have all three colors ready to go. So super quick and easy. It is a non-porous surface. It's easily washed and it's handy. So that is what I'm going to use for my paint palette, closing up my inks because I don't need them open right now. Okay, let me make sure this is yeah nice and wet. I'm going to start with my lightest color, which normally when I'm watercoloring, I do recommend starting with the lightest color. And I'm going to start with Mango Melody. And I am actually going to run that out all the way. And you see how, because I'm not inking up with more ink, I'm getting a pale version of it out here and a lighter, uh, a stronger version here. Now, if you wait and let it dry a little bit in between and add more, it's going to give you a stronger um, depth of color. So I want this center to have a lot of this mango melody. So I'm going to just keep adding that in. Just add a little bit more. Now, I'm actually done with Mango Melody. So I will move this over to Calypso Coral. And I'm gonna pick up some coral and I'm gonna go right in there. Whoa, that is bright. Now, that is, if that's too bright, I can just take that and squeeze some more water and just feather it out. And if, I, I can also tell you that you wouldn't think it, um, you think that I'm just obliterating all of the yellow, but it is underneath there. And those different shades underneath there actually give you um, a, a more beautiful look. And this is actually also a lot more like um, the way colors are in nature. They typically have more of these variations. Now I can also just bring that in a little bit if I hone that down a little bit and bring more of the orange inside there. And I actually kind of termed this, nicknamed my card, a sunset sunflower because these are classic sunset colors. Okay, now we're gonna add the magenta madness. So here we go. And I'm gonna bring that on the edges. And look at that. Isn't that just a beautiful way to use this magenta madness? I absolutely love it on here. I think it gives you such a beautiful, beautiful hue. So I hope you guys are liking this. So that is my sunset sunflower, done and dusted. That's all you need to do. Now, I will also give you a couple of hints, and that is that if you are going to die cut this, and I'm going to assume that you are, I hope I didn't lose my feed. Um, it's not coming through on my computer. Um, hmm. Let's see. I've lost my ability to see you. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. Um, if you are going to die cut this, 
you need to let this dry and I'll tell you why because if you run this through it's very wet I've put a lot of water on here and it is going to really really um, like get all shredded and shaggy um, when you run it through the die cutting machine so you want to really really let that dry now if you're impatient like I oftentimes am um, you can use a heat tool to help it dry um, Oh yay, thank you for letting me know, Terry, that we're still here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, just because we're on live TV here, I've actually done one and already cut it out so that we don't have to wait. And now we're gonna play a little bit. Because I just think that's a fun thing I do with you guys. So, here is my original card, and I put it on a Mango Melody base, and here is my second version. This time, I think we're going to just change it up a little bit. This particular piece of designer series paper, there is another piece that has this other color on the back. So it has a little bit more of the purple rather than the blue, and I thought it was just laying on my table and I thought okay let's try this one and let's just see how this is going to look with this and you can tell me whether we want to have a purple posy card base or if we want to have a magenta madness card base or if we want to have a rich razzleberry card base. So what are we thinking? This is kind of deep colors here. We can go with bright colors here. Hi Mary, I'm glad you're here. Or with a soft color here. I think they all look really good. So I'm just gonna kind of wait for some votes. And I will give you some recommendations on lining up that die. Diana, I think that was a, actually a great question. So tell me what you're thinking about a background here. One of these is going to be the background. And the other thing is that when you go to affix this die here, um, you can run this. We have some new adhesive sheets. Um, I'm still going old school and I'm using my um, liquid glue and sponge. And I'll show you a couple of things with that. Okay. We've got a vote for Magenta Madness and one for Rich Razzleberry, another Magenta and another Rich Razzleberry. Okay, so we're down to these two colors. I'm gonna take the Purple Posy out. We're gonna go with one of these. I need another vote here. Um, so this is, the, um, this is the silicone mat, and you can see it's a bit mucky. It's got some dried um, liquid glue on here. Look what happens to that dried liquid glue. You just pull it up. You just run your finger across there and it pulls it up. And it looks like, yeah, something that's kind of nasty, but you know, that is the way that you pull it up. So Mary, you like the softer colors. Now, one more thing that you can do on here, and I forgot to bring it over here. I'm having to go up and down a few times while I'm here with you. I appreciate your patience. favorite things to have in my craft space. Um, I buy this by the case at Sam's. You can get it also from Amazon. And um, I use it a lot for packing your packages, sending out classes, but it also is great for picking up all of this kind of stuff. And I will also tell you, it is my go-to thing for, my go-to resource for sometimes when you have this, um, call it um, stamp and scrub it'll get lint on it and this is perfect for picking up the lint see that and then I can just throw that away so great lint picker upper great cleaner for your silicone mat or silicone sheet I think it's called in the catalog okay 
let's see, Razzleberry, Razzleberry, Magenta. I think actually Razzleberry might be winning our little um, poll here. So my next question is, well, let me take it one thing at a time. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to put a little bit of liquid glue here. And like I said, this is messier, this is old school, this is not using our new adhesive sheets, but it's, I don't know, sometimes I just like it, I like to do it this way. Oh, my little, where did my little, where did my gluey sponge go? Hmm, it's supposed to be in this little case. This is where I keep my gluey, messy things, and it's not there. station. Okay, here we go. So here is my gluey sponge. I've got a little handle on there. And I have used, I usually, usually have a cardstock handle on my sponges for sponging, but when I'm doing glue, I don't want anything paper on here. So this is my answer. So what I'm going to do is take my gold foil die cut. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this. I like to spread it out so that it's spread on my sponge and it's not going to glop it up. And I'm just going to dot it all over. And then I'm going to pick that up, put that aside, and then I am going to, whoopsie, line this baby up. Now this is a little tricky. Um, let's see. Nope. I'll show you what I try to look for when I'm lining this up. There we go, right there. And then I'm just going to press really well. And then I have my gold layer on top of my watercolored flower. So you can see how that's going to look. See how that brings out those purples? Isn't that just amazing? And here is how it brings out the pinks. I think this, my, my um, sunset sunflower, I think it's almost like a chameleon. It just goes in so, with so many different colors. So let me give this a nice crease. And then I think I'm probably gonna use just one of these. I could use both. I could use them either this way, they're two strips. Or I could even use them this way where I have purple on each end and the lighter colors in the middle. I'm kind of liking the two strips because I think it really offsets my, my sunflower. So tell me what you guys are thinking. Um, gluey sponge with a binder clip. Oh, I'm glad you like that, Susie. So we've got, oh, well, maybe Magenta Madness is winning. Let's see. Now that we've got kind of the papers here. You know what, since we're go since I'm kind of using this in color, let's go with Magenta Madness. Okay. And this is gonna go back in here because then it's not going to get anything else messed up and I don't have to rinse it or anything like that. It's ready to go. Okay, so this is my two pieces of um, designer series paper. And um, let me just show you, I've got a couple of options with ribbon. Now on my original card, I used the Magenta Madness ribbon, but I was also using a different color of cardstock underneath. So let me just show you a couple of other options that we have. I could use, this is the gold shimmer ribbon. I don't know if we need more gold or not, let's see. How this looks. So we've got these two strips. And you know, sometimes you don't have a full piece to put on your cardstock here, but you might have two strips. So that's a soft gold. So this is not super shiny the way this is, it's just a soft shimmer. And then my other thought was to bring in some vanilla. This is that my trusty, this is one of my all time favorite ribbons the trusty vanilla with the gold edge, and that kind of brings extra brightness there with the vanilla. So let me know what y'all are thinking. 
with regard to those different ribbons, gold shimmer, gold um, edged, or the magenta. And I will say both of these are dressier ribbons. This is a twill ribbon, so it's not quite as dressy. So tell me what you're thinking. And the gold, okay, Jackie's voting for the gold. Now, I'm assuming you need the gold shimmer. I'm thinking that this, this is gonna be a little bit too much of the um, magenta madness because we have it as our card base this time. So let's put that one aside while I'm waiting for some other, um, the vanilla and the MM. Now Cheryl, what is MM? Magenta Madness. Oh, I got you now. Okay, I've got votes for all three of them. Okay, so we're gonna have to come up with something here to decide what we're gonna do. And I think that, well, no, I will just put that down. Let me go ahead and put this down first and just going to, aren't these scrummy colors? This Artistry Blooms paper is just beautiful. I really, really love it. And I like the fact that with this particular design, um, I'm just opting to put purple on both ends and cover my seam with, okay, I've got another vote for gold shimmer. Let's see what other people are saying. And I'm just gonna leave a little gap there because it's gonna be covered up with the ribbon anyway. Okay, the ribbon with the gold trim or the gold shimmer. Let's see, there's the gold trim. And here's the gold shimmer. Wow, they're both really pretty. You know what, I think I'm gonna go with the gold shimmer because it, um, I think it has a little bit, the gold, uh, the shiny gold might detract a little bit from the gold here. And I don't want anything to detract from that. So what I've done here is I've just opened my card and I've wrapped it all the way around like so. This is going to be covered up by my beautiful sunflower, sunset sunflower. Let me say it right. Bring that over like so and lay that down this ribbon here this is the gold shimmer ribbon this was actually introduced as part of a suite last year a christmas suite and it actually made it into look how pretty that is on the inside of the card uh actually made it into our annual catalog this year and i think it's a really versatile ribbon oopsie okay you know, I think this was not laid down straight and that is my problem right there. Okay, so now I am ready. Ay, ay, ay. Ha, come on, come on, there we go. Now I'm ready to put my sunflower right in the center. And the other thing I don't wanna forget is I don't wanna forget my my pretty greeting. Now, where did my little piece of pink cardstock, I had a little piece of Magenta Madness cardstock to put my greeting on. Let's see where it is. I had all of these pieces over here. Let's see, here's all my extra gold for my, these are my branches and my gold leaf so we can figure out which of those items we're going to use and then i've also got these pretty artistry blooms sequins and look how the kind of orangey ones look on there isn't that cool and then these are the purpley ones and they just pick up the light i love the fact that they don't add any bulk to my project and so it will mail for a single stamp. I think on my original, I used the rich raspberry ones. I think I'm gonna use the, um, I think I'm gonna use these orangey ones, the Calypso coral ones. So let me just put that over here. 
and okay so those are kind of our pieces that we're going for um, I still haven't found my little piece of Not Melon Mambo, Magenta Madness. I had a little strip all pre-cut and ready to go. Yikes. Where are you? Oof. Well, while I'm still, I keep thinking it's going to turn up here. I packed it in my little envelope and now I can't find it. See, this is what happens even sometimes when you order a class. They're packed. With, the packets are packed with very human hands. Okay, so while we are figuring out where that is, I'm going to just show you because I think it was Diana asked about tips for lining up this stamp with the die. So what I look for is there are some petals that kind of angle off to the right. And so there's also on here, there's some of these that angle off instead of just being like zigzags, they angle off to the side. And so I look for those and then boom, they just line up like that. Now, when you run this through your die cutting machine, you definitely want to put a little bit of washi tape. And what I have found as well is you want the washi tape to just be on the die and out here because um, I think maybe because the paper, maybe because mine wasn't completely dry, it's still pretty wet. I would not wanna put this through my die cutting machine right now it's still pretty wet. Um, but I did notice that where I had some washi tape here, it pulled some of this watercolor paper off. So the next time I did it, I just used the washi tape on the die itself and then over into the, um, into the paper. Um, Diana, the name of the branches, that's actually all part of this set. So you really get some great things here. You get a double branch as well as a single, and then all of these nice leaves, the center, and then that little mini, um, this little mini one. Okay, so that's how you line that up. I guess I'm gonna have to go over there to my workstation and find a piece of pink cardstock to put my greeting. I need you guys to tell me, are we gonna go um, portrait? Or are we going to go landscape on this one? Tell me your pleasure, please. And of course, my piece of Magenta Madness cardstock was still over on my workstation. I just found it. I had not loaded into my package. Okay, portrait. Okay, so you already got the branches. So you're good to go. You're good to go, Diana. So here's my little piece. It's just a little four inch by three quarter inch piece of Magenta Madness. I'm going to ink up Thanks a Bunch. And I'm just gonna use my Memento ink. Okay, I've got some, oh, several, everybody's going landscape. Okay, I think the portrait just got outvoted by the landscapers. So let's go with that. And I am just gonna line this up towards the end and I'm gonna flag the one end of it. And you guys know my favorite way to flag anything is to use my Taylor Tag Punch. Hmm, is that going downhill? No, I think it's straight. No, you know what? I think I'm gonna try that again because I think I'm going downhill. I am stamping upside down, but still. Let's try this one more time and see if I can get a little bit straighter. Ah, that's better. Okay. So now I'm going to feed this into my tailored tag punch. And you, know, you can kind of see where the ink is and I'm gonna come down a little bit and then just center it and perfect flag every time. So that is where I'm going to go. And landscape has definitely won the day. So let's go ahead and start putting these pieces together. I'm gonna to start with this and I'm going to put quite a few dimensionals on the back because I want it to stand proud. I want it to stand tall and proud. So I'm gonna go all the way around the edges here and then I'm gonna put one right in the middle as well so that we don't have a saggy middle. And you'll find that even though, like I did this one yesterday, so this is really dry, 
um, the watercolor paper, because it's cotton, it's very pliable. And so you can really kind of um, shape it the way that you want. And I think I'm going to do it like so. I think that's centered. And then my thanks a bunch, I'm going to, hmm, that is just barely, I'm cut a little bit off here because it's not quite gonna fit. If I don't, and I don't, I want to be able to see my words on there. Thanks a bunch, right there. Okay, and then we're gonna add some gold. We're gonna add a little bit more gold. You know, I might could have done that greeting in a different color, but I think we're just, we're celebrating, we're working with magenta magnets. So that's what we're really concentrating on is madness. Okay, I can add this. I have not punched out the little pieces yet. So I could have a really solid piece of gold um, leaf. This is the way I did on my original. I punched out those pieces so that I would have just a hint of gold versus a punch of gold. So we'll see what we're thinking about that. And here is one of my little branches. This is a double branch and it actually already has some adhesive on it. So I'm just going to, must have been left over from one I was working on yesterday. So I'm just gonna stick that down. And let's see, I'm gonna look at comments. See what y'all are thinking. Um, oh, Mary, you love making cards with me. I love making cards with you guys too. And this is the way we're doing our classes because we can't meet in person right now. Um, so what are we thinking? Do we want that big bold leaf or do we want, or you think I should punch that out? I could go in either direction. I could also take that out and I could use one of these. So these are really nice. Um, and I just used a two by four inch piece of gold foil and I was able to get that leaf and then two of these, a double and a single branch. So um, you like that gold leaf, okay. And the branches too. So let's see, is less more or is more more? Let's see what we can do here. We could either go here and then we could go there and I'd have to, and we could go that too. Do we want all of that? That's a lot of gold. Um, Lori, you're liking the thin ones too. Yeah, you're right, Diana. See, when I did it, um, this was my original and then the next time I did it, I did it in Lance, in, uh, portrait mode and you do have more room for the greeting. Also depends on if you have your sunflower positioned a little bit higher. Um, here I'm smack in the middle. If I had raised it up just a wee bit, it would have, um, it would have been um, better placed. Yeah, I think it's a little bit too much. Let's go back and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to snip that because it's kind of colliding with my, um, I've got a bunch of dimensionals under here and I'm going to just add a wee bit of snail or stamp and seal, whichever you happen to have handy. I'm gonna tuck that underneath there. Slide it underneath, there we go. So I've just got that little hint poking out there. I think that's a better look. And now let's bling it out a little bit more with the sequins. And this to me is just makes it look like almost like little raindrops on here. Aren't they pretty? I think these sequins are just amazing. And I will tell you because of course, as demonstrators, we have already been pre-ordering from the holiday catalog. And if you like sequins, you're gonna love the options in the holiday catalog. Okay, and I will also tell you that I have room on my team for more people. And if you would like to join us, there is room for you. We would love to have you join us. I'm trying to find where this last, ah, there we go, where this last sequence is gonna go. We would love to have you join us. We actually have our team meeting tonight and we are meeting on Zoom. 
and we're going to be stamping and chatting and catching up with each other and learning some things. And Yolanda is here. Welcome. Okay. So that's where we went today. And this one is really, really got a lot of that um, magenta madness. So my original cards were on a mango melody base. Today, we took the exact same sunflower with the exact same colors and put it on a magenta madness base. All of these papers, the designer papers, are all from that Artistry Blooms. And I think that I like them all. I don't know which is my favorite. Uh, I kind of dig them all. Here is the set of papers so that you can see I really like the back you know there's a B side to each one and I really really love the B sides of these because they just have so many pretty shades to them of the colors that we love so that is what I have for you today I hope that you've enjoyed my little technique training a little bit of training on how to use these dyes and in particular how to watercolor and create your own sunset sunflower using magenta madness, mango melody, and calypso coral. They just work beautifully together, and you can see how on some of them I've got more of the pink. Um, some of them a little bit, it's just kind of lighter. Depends on how deep you go with your, uh, with your watercoloring, kind of how many layers. So that is what I have for you today. Um, I will also tell you that there are only, what's today, the seventh, days to register for my upcoming His Love class. So only three more days to get this class by mail. And so this is using the His Love stamp set. The class itself is $35, and you get everything to make the eight cards, and then you also get a package of the champagne rhinestones, which you're going to use on your cards. You get a package of the petal pink striped organdy ribbon, and then you also get oopsie, a half a package of this designer paper. So that is the His Love class, $35. And um, that does not include the stamp set. You can add it. Um, only three days left to register for that. And I will bid you farewell. Let me grab my ribbon that's flying. You would not believe how messy my workstation is. Actually, maybe you would believe because, hey, we are all crafters together here. We understand having messy desks. It's part of what we do. And I love um, one of my team members, Melissa, she always likes to do the messy techniques. So she's always using like the, the embossing paste and lots of watercoloring and lots of, um, what do you call those, masks. And I said, you know, Melissa, you always do the really messy things. And she said, well, I always feel like you haven't really crafted if you haven't made a mess. So I love that, um, I love being able to make a mess. And I do love um, designing with you guys. So um, that just kind of is my happy place to be on here with you guys and hearing your feedback and the way that um, you would like to see the card that we're making come to life. And um, I think that um, it's like having several cooks in the kitchen and we're all tasting to see how it's gonna come out. If it needs a little bit more cinnamon or a little bit more salt or a little bit less sugar or whatever. So I feel like um, it's kind of like what we do here on our Tuesdays at two. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I will show you one more little thing and that is um, I have a free stamp set to give away. It is a hostess stamp set. And it is, if you will share my videos at any point during the month of July, I'm going to draw for this at the end of July and mail it to one lucky winner. And um, when you just share my video, so share it to your groups, share it to your wall, share it, share it. And that helps me so much. And you can do that on any of my July videos. Hopefully you'll do it on all of them. I will see you here on Thursday for simple and stepped up stamping. Thank you again for joining me. Take care and God bless.
and it won't let me finish. There we go.